Hi, this chemistry video is called Quantized Energy and Photons. It's really about light as particles. Now, I'm doing these videos in relation to a chemistry textbook known as Chemistry the Central Science. And in that particular textbook, this is chapter 6, uh, section 2. Now, the first section of this chapter, another video I have out there, is on light uh, and energy as a wave. But in this next section, we're going to talk about light and energy as particles. This is a strange thing. How can light and energy be both a wave and a particle? How is that possible? This is one of the, the mysteries, as it were, of, of modern physics. But um, it is true that light behaves both as waves and light behaves as particles. So how did we come to think that light and energy might behave as particles. Well, this is actually a very old idea. Newton, uh, Isaac Newton in the 1600s actually thought of, of light as a particle. But then um, as the, eight, the early 1800s came along, it became clear that light behaved as a wave. And then in the early 1900s, well, wait a minute, it behaves as a particle. And pretty much in the 1920s, um, physicists came to the conclusion there's a kind of duality uh, there was a name, uh, f physicist named Louis de Broglie um, whose claim to fame is uh, showing that there really is a duality, a, a wave-particle duality of both matter and energy. So what really kicked off the revival of the particle uh, approach uh, to light and energy, and by particle I mean kind of little packets of, of energy, that, that en light, light and energy exist in little little uh, packets, like tomato packets, you know, that you get at a, at a restaurant. Um, not, not really like that, actually. So what kicked it off in the year 1900 and just beyond, before was something that was known in physics as the ultraviolet catastrophe. It wasn't a real catastrophe. No physicists were hurt in the ultraviolet catastrophe. But basically, a guy named Raleigh and a guy named Jeans uh, had come up with a formula that was meant to describe how the energy um, would distribute among frequencies um, if you had something called a black body that was irradiated. Irradiated, you know, you put, you put energy on it, you put light on it. A black body, by the way, um, because it's black, uh, the color, black absorbs all the wavelengths. You know, red bounces back the red ones. You know, yellow bounces back the yellow wavelengths. That's why we see yellow, not because it absorbs yellow, but because yellow is what it doesn't absorb. And so a black body absorbs all the, all the frequencies. And using Raleigh and Jeans's formula, you would expect a black body to absorb all the frequencies. Now the problem is, is that given the understanding at that time, they were thinking of, of energy and light as a wave, um, I don't know if you know this from music, but when you play a note on the piano, it also has harmonics on uh, other frequencies that kind of resonate, give it a rich, a rich tone. And so, what what the formula predicted is is that the energy would distribute in such a way is that when when it got to the really high frequencies like ultraviolet and X rays, the energy would be so much that basically it would go to infinity and we would all die from you know black body explosion. But of course this doesn't happen. And so this was a real puzzle. Why don't why doesn't Raleigh Jeans's formula work? Well there's a guy named Max Max Planck. Um, Max Planck um, and if you go to Germany today you'll find all kinds of Planck institutes all over the place. Uh, but basically, Planck came up with a an uneasy solution. That is to say, he was never really happy with it. Um, but uh, it actually was the seeds of the entire physics revolution uh, that we've had ever since. Um, but he, he very uncomfortably uh, suggested that maybe energy travels in these packets. So E equals H nu. Um, you could say HV if you want. It's really a Greek nu. Um, go figure. But anyway, the idea here is that the energy doesn't distribute equally, but in fact it only distributes in little what we might call Planck packets, um, where H is a constant. Constant turns out to be 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joule seconds. And we call this Planck's constant. And, and uh, Planck, again, he, he thought, okay, we're going to come up with some 
explanation for this that fits with light as a wave. Um, he, he really didn't believe what, what, what the math was telling him, but he found out that if, if he thought of energy as distributing in packets that were that correlated with the frequencies, then he could work out he could work out what actually happened as opposed to what Raleigh Gene said uh, should happen. And thus was born quantum physics. This is, this is the idea that there is a quantum of energy, that, that energy only exists in quanta. It only ex that's the plural of quantum, in little packets, in little tomato ketchup packets of energy. Um, and that these packets are determined by this constant, as it were. Now, uh, five years later, in 1905, by the way, 1905 is called the Year of Miracles. Einstein, you'll know Albert Einstein, the name, uh, published three articles in the year 1905, any one of which uh, might have uh, earned him the Nobel Prize. Um, uh, this is the year he published his theory of um, special relativity, as it's called, the idea that the faster you go, uh, the slower time goes, so to speak. But that's not important right now. In 1905, he also published an article on what's called the photoelectric effect. And this is actually, ironically, it's not relativity that wins uh, Einstein the Nobel Prize for physics. It's his article on photo, the photoelectric effect that wins Einstein um, the Nobel Prize. But in it, he, he's, he's trying to explain a phenomenon that when you shine, when you shine uh, a light or when you irradiate, as it were, a metal, the surface of a metal, it doesn't automatically uh, dish out electrons from it. It doesn't. There now, under certain circumstances, they knew that when you irradiated a metal, uh, uh, electrons would jump out of the surface. Uh, electrons being the little negative particles that are in atoms. But interestingly enough, there was always a threshold of energy that you had to reach, or frequency you had to reach. Also, energy and frequency aren't exactly the same. But but basically, there was a certain frequency and energy level that you had to reach before the metallic surface would emit an electron. And so Einstein takes Max Planck's uh, suggestion and he suggests that the reason why there's this threshold is because light travels uh, and energy exists in little Planck, or Planck packets um, called photons. And, and so it's only when the energy level reaches these thresholds. In other words, energy is like a step. Uh, there's a, in uh, chemistry, the central science, there's a picture of a, of a uh, stairs. That energy is like stairs. You don't go, f when you're going from energy level one to energy level two, you don't go through one and a half, you know, one and three quarters, one and five eighths. That, that's not the way energy increases. But that energy goes straight from one to two. Planck level one to Planck level two. It's, it's that energy is exists in quanta, not in a continuous energy like you would have with a normal kind of wave. And so Einstein suggested that this explained the photoelectric effect, and he won the Nobel Prize for Physics uh, for it. And this has been verified to be the best working uh, working theory. And there's an equation known as the work function that tells you how much energy is necessary to free electrons from some material. Well, there's a lot of historical background in this section uh, of the chapter, but basically the point is, is that light exists in packets of energy called quantum, quanta packets. Um, that light exists in its lowest level is a quantum of energy. It's not a continuous, you can't, you can't go down, 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 down infin infinitely on levels of energy. There is a lowest level of energy possible and it is a single quanta uh, of energy. And so that's basically what this, uh, this chapter, this section of the chapter is about. So light is a wave, we learned from the first section. Light exists in quanta is what the second uh, tells you. And well, how can this be? Well, we're going to go on in the next, next section to talk about Niels Bohr's understanding of the atom that he developed after these, these developments.